Hey everyone, so today we're going to be covering viewers, specifically in Fusion. So the viewer section is this section that you see highlighted right here. So right now it's split up into two separate viewers, one on the left here and one on the right here. You can simply click this button up here if you want to go to single viewer mode. But we're going to stick in dual viewer mode for now. Just before we really dive into the viewers, there's a really cool tip that I want to show everybody that uh, a lot of people might not know of, but I find it's really, really handy. So if you notice when I kind of click around the interface here, I don't really, I don't really know where my focus is. Is my focus down here in the node editor? Is it up here in the viewers over in the inspector? So what I can do to remedy that is I can come up to DaVinci Resolve, down to Preferences. Under Preferences, I would select User Preferences. Under UI Settings, Show Focus Indicators in the, in the User Interface. So if you click that on, and then I go Save, now what you see is this little red bar. So I love that it's not intrusive. It's just a tiny little red bar that shows you which pane has focus. Very, very, very handy. So our node editor is empty right now. We have nothing to work with. So I'm going to head over to edit to the edit page. I'm going to grab under effects library. I have effects selected. I'm going to, I'm going to grab a fusion composition. So we're just going to drop that in. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to head back into fusion. So that sets up our media out node and all of our nodes are going to flow into that. I don't want to focus too much on the node editor. I just want to set something up really simple, simple so we can really dive into the viewer. So let's just grab one of these text plus nodes here. Then we're going to just grab a blur, for example, and we're just going to chain those together. So our text, we'll just call viewer example, and we're going to make that a little bit bigger. Then we're just going to go over to our blur and we are going to bring our blur size. We're just going to bring it up something that we can see. It's obviously blurring. So then we can shrink this down here because it's really the viewers we want to focus on. So you'll notice of the two viewers that I have, there's nothing in the left hand viewer. There is the media out in the right hand viewer. And I know that's the media out because if I look at this media out node, I see these two circles down here and the second one is selected. So since the second one is selected, that means this node here is showing up over here. If I highlight either of these other two nodes, you'll see that text has nothing selected. So I can come down here, I can select the left view if I want, and that shows up to this point in the chain. If I come up to blur and I were to select the first viewer, it's gonna overwrite what, what was you see here. So text is now no longer selected, and I can see this blur node. So this is pretty handy. I can set up exactly what I want, and I can look where I want in my node chain. And when, that, when this node tree starts to get really quite advanced and I want to debug a specific thing or just look at a particular node, these viewers are extremely powerful as far as really honing in on what I want to focus on. So there's a number of different ways I can set up these views here. So for example, if I have text one selected, I can push the one or the two keys on my keyboard. So I'm going to push two and take a look over here. So now, so text one now refers to my node name over here. I am selecting my text node that happens to be on both views. So if I hit the tilde key, that's the key up in the top left beside the one, that's going to clear out both of these here for this particular node. So that blanks everything out. So I can come over here. Another way I can do this, I can take this media out. Instead of pushing number two, I can just drag it into this window and it's going to set it up there. And I could just drag this over here and set it up there. Finally, you can right click on a node and you can go view on left view. What you can also do instead of just having these two views is I'm just going to shut down to a single view right now. So I'm just going to go into this view here. Each view has an A and a B view. So right now I'm looking at the A view. If I come up to this icon here, this is a drop down that's associated with it. Switch to A view and switch to B view. So I switch to B view. There's nothing set up in B view right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up in B. I'm going to bring my blur into B. And I'm going to go back to A, which already had blur on it, but now I'm going to bring in my text node here. So on A, I have this node here, and B, I have this here. So what I can do now is I can come up on this icon here, and I can click on this, which is going to set up a split view for me. So I can grab this little node here, and I can wipe back and forth. I can grab the line here, and I can kind of rotate things. I can hold down my shift key on rotations and go in steps of 45 degrees. One thing I can also do with this viewer is if you don't like this checkerboard background, as you right click here, you can come on to options and this checker underlay. As you can uncheck that and it'll just go to a black background. 
that affects only my A, and I can do the same thing with B as well. And if I come back to here, we're working on viewer two, I can also do the same thing for viewer one. And the last thing to notice, there's a label up here, and that corresponds to the two different nodes that you have selected for your A and your B. So let's turn that off for now. I'm gonna right click here, and I'm also gonna turn off on options the underlay. Okay, so I've set up in single viewer mode, and we're gonna look at some of these uh, zoom examples, and how to zoom and pan, that type of stuff. So zooming, quite simple, a uh, bunch of different methods, but what I prefer is uh, holding down control or command and middle mouse button, zooming in, zooming out. I can also do a really weird uh, holding down the middle mouse button, and you kind of got to do that with your middle finger if you want to use this. And if you're holding down the middle mouse button and you do a left click, you'll zoom uh, in by a predefined increment. And if you hit the right mouse button, you'll zoom out. So I'm not really dexterous enough to use that all the time, but that's something that is available. Um, I can also press Control F, and that's going to zoom to fit. So if you notice, I've taken up the full real estate of this viewer here. Uh, one caution when you're zoomed to fit is you don't see any information on the top of the screen. So for example, if I select my text node here, come down to tab spacing here, I'm going to just uh, put a carriage return in here and I'm going to press the tab key and then you see this line here show up and there's this little alignment option here so let's say for example if I move this over to negative one that means left align to this particular tab stop if you zoom out a little bit you'll notice this control up here that you didn't see before and that also does the same thing as this align does here so I can click this and it'll align my text here with respect to this particular tab stop anyway just something to keep in mind I'm gonna get rid of this for now I'm just gonna uh, delete that tab and that goes away. Control F goes to full screen. I can also press Control 1 to zoom into 100% and that is referenced up here. I can take this drop down. There's a bunch of preset uh, zooms here. I can do that as well. And if I want to pan this around, I can hold down the middle mouse button and I can move things here. All right, so I brought in a still image here to show all these subviews and what they do. So up here, you'll see there's a subview icon and then there's this little drop down beside it. So we'll just click on the drop down. It's set right up now to, to set on navigator. So I'm going to click this icon here to turn on the navigator. And what that is, is a, is a separate window that appears over here. And let's say, for example, I zoom in on my main image here, it's just giving us a reference point sort of where we are. So I can sort of drag and I can see that move around. So that's the navigator. I can grab and I can resize these things here. So that's the navigator. I'll come up to here. I'll go to magnifier and this shows sort of a pixel level view of wherever my mouse is. So if I come look at this propeller here, okay, that's all looking good. I can also select a 2D viewer. Essentially that's just showing the full image. So if I'm zoomed in, I'm working at a particular point. I have a reference here, which is my full image. I can come over to 3D histogram here. This is a pretty cool one. So it shows this cube here with colors on each of the vertices of this cube and it's showing me basically a representation of how the colors are distributed. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to press Control F to go full screen again. And you can hold Alt middle mouse button to, uh, to rotate this around. And you can hold middle mouse button and uh, move your mouse to pan around. So I'm going to just sort of set it up like this. If I hover my mouse over here on the blue clouds, you can kind of see I'm heading over towards that that blue side of the cube. If I come over here to black, we're right in that corner. If I come up to white, we're up in that opposite corner. And for a number of these subviews, what I can do is I can uh, press Shift V and it'll switch the subview and my main view around. Shift V again goes back. Come up to Color Inspector here. So the Color Inspector is just showing my RGB and alpha values as well as a little color swatch up here with whatever my mouse happens to be over. If you look at this bar down here, as I move my mouse over my image, I get the RGB values and the alpha values showing up as well there. Uh, but this might be a little handier just because it's up closer to your image and the little color swatch uh, appears as well. So we'll come over to Histogram. Histogram can be a little bit buggy here as far as changing uh, different color channels. So here's our histogram. Uh, we're, if you look up at this icon here, we're in full color mode. Our, our, our red, green, and blue channels are all showing. Um, we can pull this drop down here and we can just pick a, a particular channel to show. So if I just pick blue, uh, now we're showing a grayscale representation of our blue values in, uh, in the image, but this histogram did not update itself. Uh, eventually it kind of will. You kind of got to play with things a little bit here. Um, so now I clicked on this icon, we're back into color mode. Um, you fiddle around with this long enough. There we go. And you'll, you'll eventually get it to, to show just a particular channel. 
image info, just showing some very basic information here. One thing to keep in mind, if you notice this is right up at the top of the screen, if I come down here and I just select my text node, which is my text node isn't really hooked up to anything right now, but that that's okay. I click on my text node and you'll notice here it's brought up this extra toolbar here for the, that's specific to the text node and that kind of covers up this information here and there's nothing I can do about that. So I have to keep that unselected. Metadata and then there's vector scope and waveform here. So these, um, you know what, I'm going to switch back to full color here. So this is really outside of the, the scope of this tutorial, saying that another way, I, I do not fully understand this just yet. Uh, but in any case, it, it will show you, so here's our red, here's our blue, here's our green, uh, cyan, magenta, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to turn on this text node here. I'm going to grab this blur control and bring it back into the merge. And so there's uh, blue text that shows up. And we can see now that we're heading towards blue on our vector scope. So this will give you a visual representation of how your colors are distributed throughout your image. Take that off for now. And we can also come down to waveform, which I would prefer not to fumble through an explanation of. Okay, so I want to talk briefly about two terms, domain of definition, DOD, and region of interest, ROI. So as we start to work on comp compositions that are more complex, we can end up choking our computer. And so what we want to do is maybe just show a region of the screen to give us a sense of the changes that we're doing or what we're looking for. We don't want to show the whole thing though because our computer just can't handle it. So that's where these two concepts come in. So domain of definition is something that's generally set up by the nodes themselves, whereas region of interest is something that we're going to set up ourselves as users. Although you can do some customization of DOD as well. But in this case, we're just going to focus on the sort of default DOD. So if we want to, for example, take this, I'm, I'm going to go back to actually dual viewer here. And in my first viewer, I'm just going to put this viewer example here. So DOD is in its simplest form, a bounding box that goes around whatever it is that we're talking about. So if I just right click over here, and again, this is my text node that I have selected. If I right click over here and I go under region and I go show DOD, that's going to show me the bounding box that surrounds this text here. So I'm just going to go to single or, or single viewer over here just to show this viewer. What we can also do is right click on this, come into region and go set region. And this region is the ROI, the region of interest that we're talking about. So if I go set region and let's say I only want to show example here. What the viewer is going to try to render now is only the intersection between the DOD and the ROI over here. So it should just show this example. But as we play it, nothing's really happening because there's no animation, there's nothing really going on. So this is already cached here. So what we can do just to show this is we can just put a very simple animation on our text node. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open our spline editor down here. I'm going to keyframe our size. I'm or sorry, I'm gonna go back to the zeroth frame here. I'm gonna keyframe our size. There we go. Now we see what's starting to happen here and I'm going to move this up to frame 50 and I'm going to change that size to something larger. Now you'll notice that that region of interest is not scaling. Something to keep in mind. So now when I go and play this we should see just what's in the intersection between the DOD and the ROI. Resolve though is going to, if it can kind of keep up, it will show stuff that's a little bit outside. And since this is, since this is just a simple text example, we're probably going to see something here as well, but it's guaranteed that we're going to be looking at what's in this region of interest. So here we go. Let's play it. There you can kind of see some flickers outside of the region of interest, but in any case, in this area here, we were always seeing what we wanted to see. And if I come back and run that animation again, because things are cached now a little bit, we should see some more stuff outside of the intersection between the DOD and the ROI. So this is a pretty handy tool when you want to just focus on something specific, get things set up. Then you can remove this region of interest and you can do that by right clicking here, region. Um, you can go auto region or reset region. And I'm, gonna, I'm also going to come in here. I'm going to turn off. Let's just go back here. And finally, these little ellipses over here. You can bring up this menu. It shows some of the, some of the region information that we've already gone through. The checker underlay here. I can re-enable that if I choose. We can also come to this icon here. This icon here is specific to the region of interest. So if we bring this drop down here, we click on set, we can drag our region of interest here and we can enable and disable that as we want. So thanks so much for checking this tutorial out. We'll talk to you guys all later. Bye for now.